So I got this uh, $80 ear purifier from my old mate Jeff Bezos. We can sell anything this way. Cost $80 plus a bit more shipping to New Zealand. The question is, can I turn this into a flow hood like I have in my wee lab out there? I reckon I can. So I'm going to give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. This sun is cooking me. So we chose a Toppin Comfy Ear C2. Now I found this on Amazon and it had really good reviews. So this is our device right here, unboxed in all its glory. It's quite small, it pulls the ear in from around the sides here and pumps it out the top. Uh, this is the wee device out of its box here and you can see it's got four parts around the uh, bottom where it sucks the ear in from and it blows it out the top. Underneath here we can access it by opening it up. There's the power cable and here is the HEPA filter here. Now this is an H13 HEPA filter, which are pretty good HEPA filters. The one I use inside my lab is an H14, so it's a grade above this. But this should do the trick for some pretty cost effective home mycology. The airflow output from this is 88 cubic feet per minute, which means if we create a housing around the end here that expands to one square foot, it's going to be blowing at a rate of 88 feet per minute. Now I have heard that you want about 100 feet per minute for a good laminar flow hood, but if we wanted this at 100 feet per minute flow rate, the area you have to work in front of might just be a bit small. So I'm going to try this by expanding the area at which the air comes out here up to about one square foot. And that'll give you a nice space to work in front of if you want to say collect cultures from the wild or perhaps inoculate small bags of spawn. We're going to do this by lying the device on its side and we're going to create a wee shroud that covers the end and just makes the end larger. This is hopefully what the flow hood is going to look like. So you can see I've just got this uh, Systema plastic container and I'm going to mount the flow hood coming in the end down there. I have to cut this lip off the bottom so it sits flush with the table. And once that's running it should suck the air in here, filter it and blow the air out here. I am concerned we might get small eddies of air um, circulating or dirty air circulating in these corners. But after you leave it on for a while, I'm hoping that any dust that does build up or might get stuck in these corners just comes out and that should all be clean air in there. So we just get this on the top now. Just using the old Mark 1 eyeball to centre that. Highly reliable, highly accurate. Now I don't think this plastic actually takes the ink, oh there we are, no, good to go. And there we have it. If you can see that mark, that's where the flow hood will go into. Well not the flow hood, I shouldn't call it that. The uh, HEPA filter, air purifier, it's an air purifier, we got there. Right, I'll just get this one cut out. Right, we've got this pretty good now. See if we can get this to fit. Whoa. Like a pair of Crocs. Just fits so comfortably. Look at that. So I think the containers are pretty good. Again, I don't like the square corners, but um, I think it will do the trick. Now the Air purifier is mounted in the back here. I'm going to need to seal along the edges here because if there are small holes where air can get through, you might get a negative pressure here as the air is getting blown out that way. So I'm going to seal that up to make sure no dust or that gets sucked through there. So it's on and it's working. There's a lot of air coming out of it. We're going to set it up inside in my incubation chamber out there and we're going to uh, run some experiments with it. We're going to leave some open dishes inside here and out here and see if they contaminate. So I've set up my flow hood on a table here in the corner of my incubation room. The reason I've set it up in here is because this isn't a clean room. There's lots of dust in the air, there's carpet on the floor. So this is going to tell us if this wee flow hood here is able to clean the air that moves over these plates here. 
I prepared these plates in my clean room next door and we will open these up uh, while there's two in here, two out here um, and I'll put a, a control plate uh, on the side there for a bit. We'll open them up, we'll leave them open for five minutes and we'll see if they stay clean. A few things I have done, one is I've put blue, t blue tack around the edges where it meets with the um, container here. Now this is just to stop air getting sucked through dirty air at the back and getting um, blown out here. I'm sitting quite low on this table, um, it gives me a work area inside here, but I also think you can work outside here as well. So if, if the plates in here stay clean, you could in fact um, bring this closer and work with your hands in here, um, always behind the plates you're using. We'll get this turned on and we'll see uh, if it keeps these plates clean. So we will turn this on. And I'm putting it on setting number two. Number three probably just blows, actually blows quite a lot of air on number three. You can see it there, it might be a bit too much. And one doesn't blow much at all. So I'm gonna put it on two. And then what I'm going to do is wipe down the, sorry my spray bottle's seen better days, it doesn't spray too much. I'm going to wipe down the whole inside with isopropyl, 70% isopropyl alcohol and water. I'm going to make sure we give a good wipe. Just to get any loose debris off. We're also going to wipe down our table out here and cover our hands so our hands are nice our gloves are nice and sanitized I'm just going to sanitize my arm a bit as well I actually filmed the first half of this video uh, months ago and since then I busted my arm and it's come back I've had to get surgery on it you can see the scar there so but it's healing up nicely I've got a lot of use back I can't lift anything with it though And these are our plates here. Now what I like to do with plates before I open them is give each side a spray. That one's kind of coming off. And then I just, with my hands, I usually just go around like that there. Now what I'm going to do is open two plates in here and two plates back here. And we're going to leave them for about five minutes. And after the five minutes is up, I'll come and I will seal them back up. And we will give them a week in our incubation room and see if we have any bacteria or uh, any other stuff growing on the surface of uh, the plate. These are malt, uh, ex malt extract agar plates I made myself. We'll open these two in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open that plate and set it open like that there. And we're never going to go in front of the plate, we're always going to be working behind it. Open these two here. And we're going to open these two right here. Now I'm going to give those five minutes. Right, we've had this on for about five minutes. I'm going to cover these plates up, seal them, and we'll see if it's worked. To cover them, I use parafilm. I actually get the one that's wider, and I cut it into thin pieces like that. Some people use the long strips, but I think this is the most efficient way for plates. You don't need a heck of a lot on there. Some people overdo it, I think. You just go around like that there. I'm going to mark these plates at the front with a one and mark these plates at the back with a two. So you'll know what is what. Do I need to mark left? Two L, two R, one L, one R. And we'll just do a weed control as well. I'm just going to open this plate up and expose it to the air for about five minutes. 
So this is turned off so it's not pulling clean air up over it and we will close that up after five minutes and note which one it was. So it's been about a week now, I think it might be just shy, a day shy, and the results are in. So let's have a look at what our plates look like. Now they're not perfect, and I could have guessed this, there's still a number of vectors for contamination which exist in this room I'm doing the test in. There's carpet on the floor. There was a big fan I'm blowing this direction when I was doing it. If you go back in the video, you actually hear the background sound of a big fan blowing. I didn't turn that off and the air was sort of blowing this way. There's another vector for contamination. You know, I hadn't ran this in the room at all prior to starting it, so there would have already been a lot of dust in the air. So to improve the results of this, I probably could have um, ran this a little bit longer, maybe vacuumed the floor with a vacuum with a HEPA filter. Ideally, you'd want a room that's easier to keep clean. So this is the results. Now it's not ideal, I do think I could have achieved cleaner plates if I had uh, prepped the area in the room slightly more. But perhaps the point of this video wasn't to show that, perhaps it was just to show that you can achieve reasonably good results from a very cheap setup. You can see the control plate down the bottom here, I'm just going to count up the number of um, instances of contamination on it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That's 14 points of contamination which I can visibly see there. So that's the control and that's sat for about 5 minutes just open on top of the box which is just behind it here. This one here is contamination free, great plate. This one here has one point of contamination there. This one up here has actually two, it's got the big trite contam. And then right next to it just here there's a tiny drop of bacteria right there. So it's two for that one, and this one up the top here has got the trike, which actually has three, and then a little spot of bacteria there. So to go from this one here, to relatively, to a clean plate and then a near clean plate like this, is a pretty good result I think. As I said, I could have got better if I'd spent more time preparing this room. Even leaving this, this device on for you know, an hour, two hours before I started, would go some of the way to getting this trike out of the air. I do think it's a bit perplexing that the, tr the, the containers that were actually inside the contain, the plates that were inside the box, got more trike on it than these two which were sitting out here. Perhaps there was a bit of dust current um, stuck in the box, which I did mention earlier on in the video I was concerned about, eddies of air stuck in there. But it's certainly a major decrease from this plate here. So I thought about reshooting this whole experiment and maybe making this room a bit cleaner, giving it a vacuum, leaving this running for a bit so I could produce better quality plates, you know, make the video look better. But that's not what it's about. I think this video is about showing you that with a limited and perhaps cheap setup, you can pull off some alright home mycology. I mean this has shown, shown you that you can get clean plates from an affordable flow hook. I mean there's one there. Because I think what this world needs is more people looking at the ground, more people looking at the mushrooms that grow on the ground, and more people gaining a respect for these organisms.